On January 19th, 2019, Marcelo Bielsa called an emergency press conference just days before a match with Derby County. The last time Bielsa had called an emergency conference in his career, he had resigned from his position as the manager of Lazio. So when the news was broken, fans were expecting the worst. However, Bielsa would shock everybody, coming up to the public and going very in-depth to reveal the secret behind Leeds United's success in the 2018-19 season. But how did he get here? It all began in June of 2018, where Bielsa was appointed as the new manager of Leeds United. I was convinced by the strength of Leeds United as a club and an institution. His arrival was following that of Paul Hickingbottom, who did not stay very long as he drove Leeds down to 13th place in the 2017-18 season. Ahead of the 2018-19 season, Marcelo Bielsa had some very interesting new additions to the squad, in the likes of Patrick Bamford and Barry Douglas, who went on to play integral roles in the team moving forward. Bielsa's first five matches were electric in the championship, and Leeds instantly shot up to the top of the table. He even won the Manager of the Month award for August. Bielsa is known for his extensive and over-the-top research and analysis of his opponents, which made him a sought after manager in the world of football. But the transformation of this lead side was something never before seen at the club. To go from 13th place last season to holding a consistent spot in first place in less than 12 months was unbelievable. Everyone was wondering what trick Bielsa had up his sleeve. Fast forward to January and Leeds were sitting at the top of the table and preparing for their next match against Derby County. And for context, a lot was riding on this match. Leeds needed the three points to keep the hopes of automatic promotion alive and Derby County were fighting for a place in playoffs. So these three points were absolutely crucial for either team. In the build-up, Derby County were spreading their preparations on the training pitch, practicing their formation and set pieces. Everything was going as planned and seemed normal, until one of the Derby staff saw something, or I should say someone, that looked unusual. And before I continue, I want to please ask you to hit the subscribe button. It would really help me out in growing this channel, and it's free to do. Thank you. One of Bielsa's staff members has been caught observing and analyzing Derby County's training session ahead of their match the next day. What happened? What was the guy doing? What, what? Hey, he was in the bushes, like laying down, and, and he had the um, his binoculars out, whatever. Like, cause I, I... When the news of this was reported, this led to lots of speculation about the strategy and legitimacy of Bielsa and the performances of Leeds this season. And the media coined it the famous name Spygate. Spygate. The, the Spygate incident. Let's talk Spygate. This forced Bielsa to call a press conference, and he came clean about the work he had been doing behind the scenes. I observed all the rivals we played against and we watched uh, all the training sessions of the, the opponents before we played against them. He went so into the detail that he gave a 70 minute briefing about each and every bit of research and data they had concluded from their spy missions. It's possible to argue that this cheating end gave Leeds an unfair advantage, but according to the regulations at the time, they had not objectively made any breaches of the rules. Therefore, the match between Derby and Leeds was played the very next day, and you could feel the tension in the air. Luckily for Leeds, they went on to win 2 0, with Jack Harrison and Kim Roof scoring goals. Following the result of this match, as you could expect, the Derby manager Frank Lampard was furious. Sportsman's level, uh, it's bad. Um, if we're going to start talking about culturally, I did it somewhere else and it was fine, then that doesn't work for me. This made Derby and many of the other clubs who had been spied on go to the EFL and urge them to launch an investigation. And with all the public scrutiny facing them, and the message to the board of a fucking shape up or get out because you've let all the fans down. You should be ashamed of yourself, you see this. That is exactly what they did. After a few weeks, the EFL came out to the public and stated that even though Leeds had not broken any specific rule, they had fallen short of the expectations relating to Regulation 3.4, which reads, In all matters and transactions relating to the league, each club shall behave towards each other club and the league with the utmost good faith. And as a punishment for violating this expectation, Leeds were fined £200,000, and Bielsa went on to pay this out of pocket, which is absolutely gangster. Now you might be thinking to yourself how going to every opponent's training session before a match to watch from the bushes really benefits a team but I think you'd be surprised. Frank Lampard reflected on Spygate in an interview with Gary Neville and said this. He could have got that much information and, and from Bielsa's side, he's saying that much information wins us the game or not. They, the, the spy thing came the day before we played them. I think Harry Wilson was injured. He wasn't in the shape that we did and we did a few set pieces. So Leeds United in the 2018-19 season scored a total of 17 goals from set pieces or around 22% of the team's goals. So instinctively going to the sessions and understanding how your opponent behaves in certain set piece situations can be crucial when it comes down to that point in the match. After all, that little piece of information can win or lose you the match. For example, Leeds were 1-0 down against Brentford, when from a free kick in the 90th minute, Jansen was able to score a header from a free kick which allowed them to salvage some points. A similar situation happened against Itwich Town when Leeds were 1-0 up and this match was incredibly close, but Liam Cooper was able to score a header from a corner to seal them the win. Clearly there were real benefits of spying on your opponents. So once this was realized by the EFL, they actually established legislation that forbid this type of strategy, 
and the new rule that was introduced prohibits anyone from an opposing team to watch their training sessions in the 72 hours ahead of the fixture. Safe to say this rule was quite an upset for Leeds, because at the time the investigation of Spygate had concluded, Leeds United were sat in second place, tied with Norwich on points for first, and then things started to go wrong. Before February, Leeds had only lost just five games. However, in the next four matches Bielsa would manage, Leeds only won once. They lost to Norwich, which they actually conceded a goal from a direct free kick, which sold them the match. Leeds also took an L against QPR, who were fighting for mid-table, and they drew against Middlesbrough. This shaky run of form was enough to knock them off their horse and sink them into the playoff zone, which meant Bielsa and Leeds would have to do some fairy tale magic to keep their hopes alive for automatic promotion. When it got to around one month out from the final match day, it looked like Bielsa had almost done the impossible. Leeds had won their last two games, and before that, the five out of the last seven. Leeds only needed to not lose any of the next four games to confidently secure automatic promotion. For the first time in 15 years, the first game was Wigan, and this match should have been a blowout, but somehow Leeds managed to take a loss against a 20th place Wigan Athletic. I don't think there was an easier chance to get three points. This dropping of points saw Leeds fall into third, and the battle only got more difficult. The next fixture in this promotion fight was against Brentford, and the tension was high. Things did not start the way Leeds wanted. They conceded a set play from a throw-in, and Brentford would find the net once more in the 62nd minute to end the match, 2-0. At this point, a lot of fans had lost their hope in their own club, and promotion looked out of their grasp. The match before last, they were already three points behind and dropped points in a draw against Aston Villa, which effectively ended their run for automatic promotion, finishing them third in the table. Could this performance have been attributed to them not being able to spy on the other teams? Maybe. It's for sure we saw a decline in their league performances following the Spygate saga, but who really knows? Leeds fans still had a sliver of hope though, as playoffs were just around the corner, and they would have to face the club that started it all, Derby County. In the first leg, Leeds won. Yes, Leeds scored an incredible cross to win the match 1-0, and heading into the second leg at home, Bielsa was excited and confident. Considering the injury before the game and during the game, how pleased are you with that performance today? I think it was a deserved win. I think I think we, when we had to attack, we attacked well, and when we had to defend, we defended well. The match kicked off in great fashion for Leeds, scoring off a rebound. 1-0, they could not have been any happier. However, shortly after, Leeds would have a mix-up at the back, and it was equal. In the second half, Derby were able to make the score 2-1 and equal on aggregate. It was one unlucky foul later that a pen would put Derby up by one. Both were not lost when Dallas equalized again. And at this moment, it was anyone's game. But Derby took the chance and seized one last goal to put it to bed, and in the first round of playoffs, Derby finally got their revenge on Bielsa. Derby went on to lose the finals in the end, but the fact that Leeds were able to make it this far and lose in the most agonizing fashion shows that Spygate might have had a real boost to the team's performances. The very next season, in fact, Leeds finally got promoted and Bielsa left the club following the 2020-21 season. The Spygate saga in itself caused so much division and controversy among the fans. Some people thought it was really clever and started to support Bielsa even more, and others were condemning his actions. So let me know in the comments where you stand on the situation. And as always, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you next week.